everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I would like to discuss graph neural networks. This video is actually a companion video for a blog post that I published on Medium. And of course, you'll find the URL in the video description. In this blog post, I start by loading graph data in Amazon Neptune, our graph database, and then I train uh, a simple graph neural network using the deep graph library, an open source library in, in Python. Here, I would like to run the sample notebook and uh, I would like to give you a few pointers on how graph neural networks actually learn. So let me switch to the notebook, here it is. So first, of course, let's make sure we have the latest libraries. I'm using the deep graph library with the PyTorch backend um, and these are the versions I'm using, okay? The next step is to load the list of edges that define the graph. I'm, as mentioned before, I uploaded some data to Amazon Neptune and then I queried it and exported it, um, which is probably what you would do in a real life scenario. And I saved the list of edges to uh, a pickle file, okay, which I'm loading here. Now, this graph has 34 nodes. We can print all the edges, okay, so we see the node IDs defining the, the edges here. And with that, we can build a graph, okay? Add the nodes, add the edges, okay? Nothing weird. And we see we have 34 nodes and 156 edges, okay? Using a, a, a pretty cool library called Network X, we can actually visualize the graph, okay? Um, so 34 nodes. Uh, edges are undirected, okay? So um, bidirectional, if you, if you prefer. And we see we have two heavily connected nodes, node 0 and node 33. And that's the purpose of this uh, sample here, is to learn how to split um, this graph into two groups uh, around node 0 and node 33, right? Now you can read the blog post if you want the, the full story on, on why we do this, okay? All right, so that's the graph. Let's start with a high-level architecture first. So we're using a network architecture called GCN, Graph Convolutional Network, okay? And we're going to look at what that means in a, in a minute. Um, the network architecture itself is pretty simple. We only have three layers. So first GCN layer activated by Relu, a second GCN layer, and then a softmax layer, okay? So the first GCN layer takes the input features for the nodes as input. It's going to apply a learning process and it outputs uh, hidden features with a, a lower dimensionality. Okay, so in fact here, as we have 34 nodes, we will have 34 features and the uh, hidden features have five dimensions. Okay, the second layer is going to do the same, take those five features as input apply some learning and output two features, okay? The, the two features for the two classes that we want to learn, okay? Remember, we want to decide if a node is assigned to node zero or is assigned to uh, node 33, right? We want to split that graph in two groups around those two nodes, so we need two classes, okay? And of course, the final layer applied the softmax function uh, to make those two features look like probabilities, okay? Remember, softmax is a math function that makes sure all the values in the vector add up to one, okay? So that they look like probabilities, okay? So that's the basic architecture. Two GCN layers and then softmax to output probabilities. Okay, now let's look at what the GCN layer actually does, okay? Uh, and we're going to look at the forward function, which is the, the forward propagation function. Uh, that function takes as input the, the graph itself and input features, okay? And the first thing that it does is use those input features and assign them to nodes, okay? And this is a shortcut in DGL to do this. So what this means is basically using the input features, which are a matrix, okay, with as many lines as you have nodes and as many columns as you have uh, features, okay? Using this matrix, assign to each node in the graph a line from that matrix, okay? So a vector of features, 
and name that node feature H. Okay, so once again, inputs is a matrix with as many lines of nodes and as many columns as features. Okay, so for each node, we take one of those lines, okay, and set a feature in the node called H valued to that vector. All right, and this is simply done by using node IDs. Okay, so node zero gets the first line and node one gets the second line, etc. Okay, so assign feature to nodes. Again, this is a really cool shortcut to do this. Then that layer will ask all nodes to send a message across all outgoing edges. Okay, in this case, edges are bidirectional, so it really means all edges. Okay, for uh, all uh, all edges attached to a node. Okay, so just send a message across all your edges. We'll see in a second what's uh, in that message. Then, okay, so once that uh, wave of messages has been sent, okay, of course it's received by each node on the other end of a given edge, and we're going to ask those nodes to reduce those messages. Okay, so basically apply an operation containing the information in the messages. Again, we'll see this in a second. And finally, uh, we take the updated features for each node and we apply a linear transformation that will reduce dimensionality. Okay, just like we saw, we're going from 34 features to 5 to 2 to get to those two classes. Okay, and this linear operation is uh, is in charge of reducing dimensionality. Okay, so that's what the a GCN layer does. Set inputs, uh, ask all nodes in the graph to publish a message, um, ask all nodes in the graph to reduce uh, the messages that it received, and then shrink basically features to a lower dimension. Okay, so what what's the deal with those messages? So what do nodes actually send? So here in the GCN architecture, we can see they basically send their features. Okay, so each node is going to publish its features on all of its edges. Okay, again, these are bidirectional, so uh, all edges are involved. Okay, and once all nodes have done that, then each node is going to look at all the messages that it received okay, containing the features for its uh, uh, adjacent nodes, so to speak, it's going to add all those features and update its own features to the sum of that, okay? Let me show you how this works, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna use my super fancy uh, digital whiteboard to do this, all right, here we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like, okay, let me, switch to the uh, uh, to the webcam. So this is what it looks like, okay? Uh, imagine you have three nodes, okay? So one, two, three, connected like this, okay? Uh, each node has 34 features, okay? And initially, this is how it goes. So when, um, when uh, the GCN layer um, requests that all nodes send their features, so obviously uh, node one will send F1 here, F1 here, and node three will send F3 here. Okay, all right. So now these, these features have been received. And now the, the GCN layer says, hey guys, uh, apply reduction. So F1 in this case did not receive anything, so F features for node 1 remain unchanged, but node 2, so F2 is going to become F1 plus F3, and F3 here is going to become F3 plus F1. Okay, in practice, it's a little more complicated. We don't just sum, but okay, as a first uh, explanation, all right, this is enough. Okay, and this is what those um, 
uh, reduce uh, operations do, add everything up. Okay, and then we apply across all nodes linear transformation. Okay, so now features fi instead of being 34 are shrunk to 5. Okay, so that's what layer 1 does. And then um, we do the same, right, uh, for the second layer. Okay, so once again, publish those no publish the features across edges, do those sums once again, and apply linear transformation again so that now fi is a two dimension vector. Okay, and at this point we apply softmax, and those become probabilities. Okay, and we have probabilities for each node. Okay, and that's gonna say, hey, the probability for class zero is this, and the probability for class one is this. Okay, and this is how we know how a given node is actually uh, is it assigned to to um, uh, the the first node, which is node zero, or is it assigned to the other node, which is node thirty three? I think. Okay, so that's the basic explanation of GCN. Okay, let's keep running the notebook. Okay, so now we understand a little better how that GCN layer works. So now let's uh, look at input feeders and, uh, and at the training process. So the input features are pretty simple here, right? Um, we have a simple graph. Nodes don't have properties. Of course, in real life, you would have properties, but here it's a really, really basic example. Uh, and uh, input features are basically just one hot encoded node IDs. Okay, so let me explain. Um, this is the input uh, feature matrix, and it has one line per node, as expected. And each line is actually the one hot encoded node ID. So node zero has zero as a one hot encoded value. Node one as one as a one hot encoded value, etc., etc. Okay, so the size of the input matrix is 34 lines, okay, because we have 34 nodes, and it's also 34 columns because we're just using the one hot encoded ID. In a real life scenario, you would have more columns with node properties encoded as well, maybe. Uh, here it is a square matrix, so we can use that torch.i uh, function to easily create it. Then we need to label the nodes that we know. Okay, so let's look at the graph again. So we know, or we decide, that node zero is class zero and node 33 is class 33. Okay, so we're going to label those two nodes and then we're going to train and try to figure out the class for every other node. Okay, so that's what we do here. Okay, two label nodes with their labels. Okay, node zero is class zero, node 33 is class one. And the rest is really um, business as usual for PyTorch. Create an optimizer, iterate over epochs for each epoch using the graph and the inputs. Run the inputs through the first GCN layer, the second GCN layer, the softmax layer, um, and apply um, a loss function, we use cross entropy here because it's a classification problem. So we're going to compare the predicted probabilities for the two label nodes, because these are the only ones we know, right, to uh, the actual labels. Okay, and we apply um, back propagation and update weights, and we do that again. Okay, so that's the, I guess, the difference between a scenario like this where uh, we do uh, semi supervised learning, okay, we only label two nodes versus maybe a deep learning scenario where the data set is completely labeled. Here we only learn from two nodes and we'll use the learned parameters to compute the class for all other nodes. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, and after a bit, we're done and we can look at the predictions for the last epoch, get the top class for each node, and print that out, okay? 
So here we see node 0 is class 0, node 1 is class 0, node 2 is class 0, etc, etc. Okay, and we can assign different colors and draw the results for that last epoch and it makes sense, right? Uh, we see those groups are, uh, are well split, reasonably split, um, and um, you know everyone that's close to zero is in class uh, zero, and everyone that's close to thirty-three is uh, is uh, in class uh, one, right? Um, so you could say, well, you know, maybe why is thirteen not red? It's directly connected to uh, um, to thirty-three, so we could print the probabilities for node 13 and well there's really no doubt I mean it's really a strong a very strong uh, uh, class 0 right um, and you know who knows but uh, it is directly connected to 0 it is directly connected to 2 uh, which is directly connected to 0 same for 1 uh, same for 12 and so it, it only has that connection to 33 uh, versus a direct connection to 0 and 3 connections to node directly connected to 0. So, you know, intuitively we can see why uh, this guy would be uh, would be in class 0. Okay, and you can explore uh, all the other nodes if you want to, right? So there you go, uh, a, a quick intro to graph neural networks. I hope that made sense. Again, if you want more context, please read the blog post. And uh, if you have questions or comments, you know, uh, please leave them uh, as well. I, I love questions. And, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.